every time I'm walking by here, I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. so cool. But I actually don't know anything about them. This changes today. I'm here with Dr. Stephanie Pearson from museums.lav and she's going to give us a little overview over these magnificent buildings you all should visit. After all, they are Berlin's most visited attraction. Every year more than 3 million people are visiting them. But in reality, it's the clubs, just no one's counting there. Should we start with the Bode Museum, where I shot last week's video for Beethoven? Okay? Sounds great. museum that was built on Berlin's Museum Island around the turn of the century, so in the early years of the 20th century. Um, and what's interesting about it is it's one of the first modern conceived museums on the island. And what that means is that in the collections inside that are on display even to this very day, there's no differentiation between the painting galleries, the sculpture galleries, the furniture galleries. They were put all together. And this was the idea of the first director of the museum, Wilhelm von Bode, whose name, as you might guess, is the name for the museum today. And there's a lot of coins in there. There's a lot of coins I in there. I was in there and I was like, wow, okay, if I had all these coins. Yeah. But someone managed to get the, the biggest one. That's yeah. right, there's one fewer <laughs> coin in there than there was. And is there another like 100 kilo gold coin, you know, we can... What's the security like? The security is probably better now than it ever has been. Yeah? <laughs> But that was one of the most spectacular pieces we've seen come out of the museums for a while. Was it like a big thing in the community here? It was huge yeah. because it really pointed up some of the unfortunate problems and lacks um, in the security systems yeah. uh, and was a chance to better them immediately. <laughs> All right, here's the Pergamon Museum. I've been wanting to go there forever, but it's like half of it under renovation. I don't know, the last five years or so. So I never actually went, but she knows everything about it. <laughs> so That's right. what, what, what is it with the construction anyway? Like? Yeah, <laughs> well, the construction here is, of course, very wide ranging. Um, and one of the things that they're trying to accomplish here is the overall vision of the museum island that's supposed to be done by 2025 or 2030. Um, nobody's talking about an end date anymore because oh it's had to be... It's like the, the airport. Exactly, oh. it's one of these projects. Um, but it's supposed to be a finished by the 200th anniversary of Museum Island um, and the Pergamon Museum being the most visited museum on the island was one of the top priorities. Mm. So what's amazing about the Pergamon Museum is it was actually built as a totally different building that had to be demolished only a few years after it was built because the collections were already too big. So this building that we see today is actually the second Pergamon Museum, but the only one that we tend to talk about now, that has a million visitors per year. What you can find inside the collections of the Pergamon Museum include ancient Near Eastern art like the Ishtar Gate. That's absolutely beautiful and it's so stunning in person. I can only say, go see it yourself. There's also the Pergamon Altar. That's the piece that gave the name to the museum, but is unfortunately not on view anymore during the construction period. On the second floor, you can find the Islamic Art Museum. That's a great museum because it's one of the most active in incorporating now uh, refugees as tour guides um, and doing a lot of other projects with the actual community, with the living cultures today, um, and combining those with the ancient cultures that you can see in the museum. I've always wondered, the museums are always like, so much into the water, are they not getting flooded or no. how do they do that? Yeah, you're right. So it's a real marvel of construction. I'm sure the architects would love that you pointed that out because they had to dig down 15 meters below water level. So we see the water mm -hmm. here, okay. 15 meters below to find any sort of solid ground to build on. And then they put in huge wooden piles like telephone poles all over just a few meters apart to make a solid ground to build the buildings on top of. Now we're here at this beautiful statue with the horse and the naked lady at the Neues Museum. So what's, what's it about this building? The Neues Museum is the home of Berlin's big Egyptian collection. So from the basement, which has Egyptian funerary material, it's like going into an Egyptian tomb. That's what the architects intended here. What most people think of when they think of this museum now is the Nefertiti bust. This is the bust of the Egyptian queen, Nefertiti. Yeah, so she's here, a very important piece. Also um, politically, is it's always discussed how she fits into the Berlin landscape because she actually came from Egypt. Um, but that's certainly one of the big highlights of the museum island. And then the upper floors on the very top, they have uh, prehistoric collections with moose skeletons, arrowheads, really old pottery that's been dug up from the area around Germany. So there's a whole breadth of art that you can see here. 
So these columns, they look very old. Uh, are they still from like the war? Yeah, exactly. So they're from the 19th century, but then they, they survived World War II and that's in part why they look so old because they've been shot up. And so they have all the bullet holes still in there? Exactly. And smoke damage, which makes them black. Yeah, so there's a lot of history in there. All right, here comes my favorite, the Alte Nationalgalerie. So why does this building look so much better than the other one? <laughs> yeah, that's Not my that question. we're picking favorites. <laughs> It's the third museum that was built on the island, and by now the architects had had some practice uh, with this neoclassical architecture, with these columns, with this look of a sort of Greek temple. Now the architects want to make it in the service of Germany. This is a patriotic collection, and the building is also patriotic. So with this, the architects wanted to achieve a building for Germania, for Germany. You can see personifications of painting, sculpture, and architecture on the roof. And those are all supposed to be the arts of Germany. There's actually a frieze on the front of the building that's called Germany protects the arts. <laughs> so you can guess what kind of art is in here. Also, it's German art. It's the German romantic painters, like Caspar David Friedrich, and some wonderful statues and sculptures that were also made by German artists that were really big at this time in the 19th century. What can you tell us about the Alte Museum? Well, the Altus is a really important museum because it's the first one on the island, but it was also one of the first ones in all of Europe. The architecture of the Altus Museum is also made to look like an ancient Greek building. And in fact, it takes ancient Greek and Roman buildings as its models. So the columns across the front, and there's also a beautiful cupola, a sort of domed space on the interior, which you can't see from the outside. It's supposed to be a surprise as you walk in to discover a big dome in the center that's modeled on Rome's Pantheon. Altus Museum now houses the collections of the ancient Mediterranean. So it's ancient Greece, ancient Rome, and Etruria, which most people don't know that much about, but those are the people who lived in Italy before the Romans. And the Romans, unfortunately, exterminated most of them. So it's a very interesting history, but one that we don't talk about that much. But the Altus Museum has the biggest collection of Etruscan material outside of Italy, where the Etruscan culture uh, was in the ancient period. So this is really worth seeing for that reason, but also because the ancient Greek and Roman art is spectacular. Do you know anything about this? awesome statues in the front. Yeah, the statues, these were made by um, German artists of the 19th century who were trying to pick up some of the classical feeling of the building's facade. So um, Schinkel, the architect of the building, who built so much in Berlin, um, he had a classical training that led to these columns being put up. So the topics of both of the statues behind us were chosen to match that with these classical stories of heroes and Amazons. I lost my llama here last last week. Oh yeah. Did you find my llama? I didn't. No. It was here. It was looking for me. Oh no. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> All right. We are at the Lustgarten. The dome is behind us, which I'm gonna make a future techno club. I promise you, I'm working on it. But I need, I need to save a little bit more. But until then, you can visit it. The neighbor for a lot of the museums that are on the island without being a museum itself but it's been here since the beginning so it was right next to the residence of the king which is right across the street and which is being rebuilt now as a set of museums um, and it's right next to germany's first museum and one of europe's first museums mm. and it's across the street from this side from the german armory what used to be the armory and now is the german historical museum mm -hmm. so it's sitting in the center of power which was highly symbolic as the center of power for germany or prussia then um, even since the Middle Ages. Is it still in use as a church? Uh, can you go there on Sunday? Yeah, uh, as they, tell, they, hold, they hold special masses mm -hmm. with special musical works. Do they also play techno? Or? Uh, not yet, that's your concept. Okay. <laughs> You've still got I'm it. I'm on it. <laughs> so you're running Museums that Laugh, you have a channel and a website. But what is it all about? Yeah, um, this is my project to con connect people with museums and with history and culture. So museums are a place that I love, but I recognize not everybody loves them. I want to bring the stories that are really exciting and interesting out of the museums to people online. So I'm making videos, podcasts, blog entries, and I'm really happy we could do this today because this is part of my project as well. No, I've been wanting to cover the museum's island for a while, and this is the perfect opportunity. Thank you a lot. Yeah. Thank you. And uh, you guys, go check out her channel, give her a sub. I like that the museum's environment is also making the move 
into the online world, which didn't happen yet, but they're getting there. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we're alone. Now let's go steal some gold coins.